Welcome friends, in this one is find the following infinite series. So n is going to go from not 1 but 2. Expression is going to be 1 over n times n minus 1. So this is going to be a telescoping one, which means you have to use partial fractions to write the expression. So in other words, you're going to begin with this. You're going to assume that 1 over n times n minus 1 can be written as the following sum. a over n plus b divided by n minus 1, this way. From here, you just have to multiply both sides by n times n minus 1 to create the bottoms. So you're going to do this. It's going to be here 1 divided by n times n minus 1. And then here it's going to be a divided by n. And it's going to be n times n minus 1 plus b over n minus 1. And then n times n minus 1. Clear what you can on the left side. Once you clear this here, we're clear with all of that. Here the n will clear with this n, and then the n minus 1 here will clear with this n minus 1. So put down what you can on the left side. Now you're just going to have 1 is equal to a times n, n minus 1 plus b times n. This is true now only if it's true for every n you put in. So specifically, choose a value of n that makes the finding a or b very convenient. So as an example, when I set n equal to 0, it is a bit arbitrary, but at the same time it's convenient for the following reason. You're going to have 1 is equal to a, and then it's going to be here 0 minus 1 plus b times 0. Now you have 1 is equal to the following, a times negative 1, because b times 0 is 0, that part goes away. So now you just divide through by negative 1, which means a will be equal to negative 1. Now set n equal to positive 1 next. Let me just move up my work a little bit here. So now take a look when I do that. I'm going to have the following. 1 would be equal to a. This would be now 1 minus 1 plus b times 1. It can be 1 is equal to a times 0 plus b, which means 1 is the value of b. With that in place, what we can do is we write the whole series. In other words, take a look. Go to the top of the page there, and this is now the same as the following. Not from 1, but 2. An expression can be written as follows. one divided by now remember the 1 is the value of b and as we saw up here b goes with n minus 1 so it's going to be 1 over n minus 1 minus 1 over n because a has the value negative 1 and then a is the one that goes with just the n in the bottom so i'm just putting the a over n second because it's negative now from here the next stage is like this take a look and i have s sub k it's like the kth partial sum can be the summation again it's going to be from 2 up to not infinity but k and then expression will look like this the same expression now we're going to write out a whole bunch of these so we can see which ones cancel and which ones remain so we can take the limit and then find the actual value of the sum so it's going to be like this let me punch down here a little bit when n has the value 2 now it's going to be 2 minus 1 which is 1 minus 1 half because n has the value 2 not 1 that's the next one. That would look like the following, essentially. 1 over... Now, this is n equals 3. So 3 minus 1 is 2. And there's going to be 1 minus 3 in this position. Next one. Let me just add this as a note here so we don't lose track of it. So I set n equal to 3 here. Let's do a couple more. Next one would be like this. You have 1 over... Now, n has the value 4. And remember, whenever you put a value in that denominator, that's coming from here where it says n minus 1. So when n is 4, it's 4 minus 1, which is 3. And it's subtracted this way. You subtract from it, that is, 1 over the value of n itself, which is 4. Plus dot 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 to suggest that the pattern continues. Now at the very end, you would have something like this. You would have 1 over... Remember that the last value is k. You have to be kind of careful, you see, because the following is true. I'll kind of put this off to the side. When n has the value k... Then if you go in here and you plug it in, you would have k minus 1. So put therefore k minus 1 in this position, minus 1 over k. The only issue with this approach is hard to see how things cancel. So what you want to do likely is add something that kind of precedes this directly. Look, not in other words when n has the value k, but for example, when n has the value k minus 1, which is the previous value. Remember in the end, these are just numbers. So like if k were 10, k minus 1 would be 9. That's all. So I'm going to have the following here. Go back over here again where I've highlighted. When n is k minus 1, we'd have 
k minus 1 minus 1, which would be k minus 2. See, so this k minus 2. When k is minus 1, then 1 over n would be this, 1 over k minus 1. Let me move this over so it fits better. Now, why would I want to do it this way? Because now a lot of stuff will cancel, and I can see the canceling pretty well. Negative one half with positive one half. Negative one third with positive one third. This negative one fourth would cancel with the positive one fourth that we're not showing, but it's in the pattern. Also, at the very end, look what happens, right? This is one over k minus one. This is negative one over k minus one. You see those also cancel? And then further, it says one over k minus two. That cancels with something that precedes it, but we're not showing on the screen this way. So why did I do all of this? Because now it's kind of self-apparent almost that the only thing left over for S sub K is the following. One. So that's from right here. Look. Right? I'm going to make that red. One divided by one there is one. At the end, I have minus one over K. So I'm going to put minus one over K in this position this way. What you can do now is simply take the limit. So it's going to be limit with respect to K as K goes to positive infinity of one minus one divided by K. Distribute the limit to each piece. So it's going to be limit as k approaches positive infinity of 1 minus the limit as k approaches positive infinity of 1 over k. Limit of the first one, well, 1 is a constant, it's just 1. Limit of the second one, remember when k goes to infinity, 1 over k goes to 0. Because you're dividing by something that's getting ever bigger, so the limit is 0. Which means it's going to be 1 minus 0, which is then just equal to 1. This is the sum of the series right here. In other words, it's the sum of this. And that is it. So if it's been helpful, please give a like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to get good at math, you just have to practice a lot. Just practice a lot, lot, lot. Eventually develop a kind of intuition for how things behave. It can be learned. I'll see you in another video.